Hey guys, it's Akonsi Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I got another video on Mars with Unity. In this video, we're going to be looking at proxy forces. Some of these forces are gonna help us to basically determine how objects interact whenever they're appearing in our scenes based on the rules that we set up in the proxy. So I'm gonna show you how that works. I'm also gonna show you what you're playing behind the scenes, which is a video demonstrating that concept. I'm also going to look at dependencies and how we can use dependencies in Mars. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing today, which is to actually create a new scene. And that new scene, it's going to be looking at new components that we can add to a proxy, which is going to be using proxy forces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I did on the previous video. We're going to start kind of like from scratch so that you guys understand how everything works. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new scene. So let's go ahead and right click in here and click on new scene. And this one is gonna be proxy. We're gonna just call this one proxy with forces. And I'm also going to be looking at dependencies. I, I haven't really used dependencies, but I think I think I understand them well enough to, to help you out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and remove these components. And we're gonna do what we did before. We can do, again, we can do a vertical plane or we can do a horizontal plane. In this case, I'm going to do just like I did on the previous video, horizontal plane. This is going to be adding the Mars session, just like you see here, which includes the camera. So on this plane, what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and go into the examples. Let me go ahead and expand this. I'm gonna go into Mars, Mars templates, examples, game, and then prefab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag and drop the, the unit E, which is the, the little cool robot that they have. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Just gonna go ahead and turn on lighting. It's going to auto-generate. I'm also going to be adding a light because otherwise it's gonna look really boring. And we can, let me go ahead and collapse this. Go ahead and move the direct directional light right after the Mars session. And I think we're, we're getting things set up now. And if I go into the simulation view, you're gonna see that that just shows because by default, the horizontal plane already has few rules. So if I go, I'm gonna go ahead and make this, let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can see all the different components. If you collapse these, you're gonna see that it only shows your filter. And which I, it's really cool that they have these dynamic menus now. But if I look at conditions, this is just looking for, you know, a plane condition and we found a plane there. So it has that and if I click on all, you can see everything in here. So what I'm gonna do is if I go ahead and click on the comparing simulation view, looks like this is, it's only showing one actually because we don't have a replicator. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a replicator to this component. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, is create an empty. This one is just going to be called replicator and I'm gonna just move it up, add a component here and we're gonna just drag and drop this component, the horizontal plane inside of the replicator. And now we should see more of the robots. And this is essentially what we did before, right? So we, you know, in the previous video, you saw what we did here. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you some of the components that are available in the physics. And, and that's gonna come in handy, not here, but when we start, you know, playing the simulation. So if I right click in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the simulation view, click on Mars and we're gonna look at the, click on the device view because this is gonna be what we're gonna be running. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit play and you're gonna see that we're gonna be able basically to traverse. So I'm gonna, I'm holding the right mouse click and I can move around. And if I do W, you're gonna see that things are gonna start appearing. The reason that they start appearing is because it's running through the augmented reality session and trying to basically find all the objects in those areas. So what I'm gonna do as well, let's go ahead and, I didn't need to hit play, let me hit play again to stop it. So what I'm gonna do is, let me go ahead and do that again. It's actually add, we need to also add a plane visualizer because I wanna be able to see the planes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add and move that up right above the replicator. And I'm also going to go ahead and change this to free aspect. And there we go. So now we can see the planes. I think it's gonna be fun if we do that. So I'm gonna hit play. And if we start moving around, you're gonna see that it's gonna start, you know, capturing the planes. We're gonna see our robots. But as the robots show up, you're gonna see that they kind of start moving around a little bit. And when when Unity talked about the forces on these components, I didn't really know what they mean. I look at the, the, the documentation they had and honestly, it did not make any sense until I started playing around with that. Then I'm like, oh, that's what those forces are for. So. 
I'm not saying that Unity has bad documentation. I'm just saying I didn't understand documentation and maybe it was bad documentation, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I understand right now. So what I'm gonna do is on this horizontal plane, I'm going to look at the forces tab. So if you look at the forces tab and make sure that we have a proxy, which we created, we're gonna look at our forces. And you could have gone here and instead of using it, the, you're doing it that way, you can click on add marsh component. But I noticed, I don't know if it's a bug or not, but when you do it through here, it doesn't add all the components that it needs. But if you go through here, it adds everything that it needs. It's going to even add some of the region components that we're gonna need. So let's say that when, when these objects are appearing, we want the objects to kind of like move around and adjust themselves. So that's what physics are gonna be for. You can, so there's multiple, you know, multiple ways that you can do this. You could align the objects that are appearing by aligning them to the camera. You can look at Occupy Regions. You can snap it to a horizontal plane if we wanted to. So there's different options in here. So what's gonna happen is when the objects uh, come up and they show up, it's gonna use the physics to basically adjust those objects in the scene based on those rules. So for example, if I want to, let's say that I wanna do a padding region on these objects. And you can see that it's showing kind of like a little you know, cube inside. So what's gonna happen, it's going to try to pad based on the based on the region. So if I go here and we look at this component, so let's go ahead and hit play and I can show you what that's gonna do. And I keep hitting that play. I think we could do it that way, but I think it's easier if we go into device view and hit play here. So as we start you know, doing plane detection and they start showing, it's gonna actually pad a little bit on the region. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and stop that. So right now we don't really see much because the cube is really small. But if I were to move that region empty, so if I look at the horizontal plane, the two components that it added is the proxy forces. You can tell it whether we're going to be allowing motion on that, on that component or we want to continue solving. So if there's physics, which we're using, it's going to start continuing to solve. So if we're colliding with other objects, it's going to try to adjust itself based on the position of the object and based on the you know the size of the region and if we require forces and this option it's basically if you want to allow padding or not it says when enable will avoid occupied regions but allow overlap with other padding, re padding regions i haven't really seen much of a difference when i have this enabled but we're going to be playing with it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and make this bigger and hopefully that's going to give us a better view of what it's doing you can see that those are now bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And if we go ahead and start traversing and we see those, you're gonna see that it is now, you know, it looks different because we have more padding on that cube. And you can see here as well. And we go, you can see that in there. Let's go ahead and do one that is, that is going to have some kind of movement so that it's easier to see. So this one is gonna be move and rotate. Let's try the rotate freely. I'm gonna hit play and see if that's going to if that's going to look a little bit different. And there we go. Let's go ahead and start scanning the area. Looks like that one just looks exactly the same. Didn't really change. So how about we make the cube? Let's actually make the cube so that it goes down beneath the option. And we go ahead, I didn't need to hit play again. And I'm gonna go into the scene view. And in this case, I'm gonna go into my region and I'm gonna move it down a tiny bit. So let me go ahead and go into ISO so that I kind of align. Okay, and we can do, we can do something, something like that I think it's going to. And let's go back into scene view, adjust this a tiny bit more. So I'm gonna make it, so we have more padding around the cube. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And let's go ahead and start scanning the area again. And there we go. So you can kind of see that it, it's it's padded, right? Like it, the, the, the pivot point that we have in here is no longer the same. So we're, we're basically padding the object location. And if we do this one here, and there we go. So let's try something else because I, I don't think this is really telling you. So this one, it's basically move and rotate freely. Let's try, let's go ahead and remove this one. Remove this one as well. I'm gonna remove the region. I'm gonna go back into my horizontal plane. Let's try a different region. So in this case, what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and do the Occupy region. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and resize it. So let's go ahead and make sure that we click on the region occupy. And we can just resize this object a tiny, tiny bit. Click on it one more time. Just going to make it a little bit bigger so that we, what I think it's going to happen, it's going to add some padding when it shows up in the scene. I'm going to go ahead and go here. I think that, I think that works. We can go up a little bit more and down just a tiny bit. Let's go ahead and look at the simulation view. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we can hit play here as well. I think I keep doing that, but it's, it should work as well. And, and there we go. So you can see how the Occupy region, the padding was added because the boundaries of this component have, you know, is basically bigger than the object inside. So if I go here and we do, we show that one, you can see how it's basically coming through from the floor. So, and we get, you know, we're getting some padding. So that's the difference between that one and the other one. The other one, I didn't really see much of a difference, but on this one, it's clearly, you know, what, what is basically showing. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and go into the region. Let's make it a little bit bigger so that we can see the difference right away. I'm going to hit play this in this time in the device view. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And okay, so I see the difference between doing it in, in play mode versus actually hitting play. So if I hit play, it's actually evaluating physics. So I don't know if that's a bug or that's basically how it's supposed to work. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit play so that we can see, we can see everything. And let's see, let's get close. And that one, there we go. That one is showing. So let's go ahead and hit play one more time. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this so that it's not huge. Now we get a little bit of padding, but not as much padding, right? So I'm going to do something like that. And let me just select the region, make it a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and go on this side, make it a little smaller here. And we can go ahead and hit play. And let's see what the differences are now. So we should see a little bit, you know, of padding on the object. And if we go here, we should also see a little bit of padding there too. There we go. So let's go ahead and go back to the, to not doing anything, right? Just so that I can show you what this is actually doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this and uncheck this. And I'm also going to be just disabling this. And let's go ahead and hit play. I just want to show you what the difference is between having the physics and not having any of the physics. So what's going to happen is just going to show that, right? There's no motion. And in this case, it's also just going to show the object. And that might be, you know, what you want to do in your case. You can see that it just shows. But if you want to have motions, just like I show you, you can do the physics forces that I just added. So I'm going to go ahead and enable this. Let's go ahead and go into my horizontal plane, enable this one, and enable this one. And then we can see, we can see that. If you didn't want to see the mesh render, maybe you want to add some padding but not see it, I believe you can also just uncheck that. And then if we hit play, we should be able to just see the padding but not see the actual mesh. And you can see how there's some padding in there. And, and this might be for cases maybe you have a planet or you have something that is in the air that you want to show, then, you know, in that case, the forces make complete sense. So let's go ahead and fix these by adding a couple of rules. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the simulation view. And what I want to do is I don't want to see these objects that are on the bottom. So I'm going to go into my horizontal plane and I show you how to do this in the previous video. You go into conditions, you can add basically a plane size. And if we look at the, if we go into all, actually we can be in conditions by just click on comparing simulation view. We can look at the size of this. This is 1.26 meters by, so what I'm going to do is on the minimum size, I'm going to set it to, it's actually set to the proper. Let me go ahead and just uncheck this guy and rerun the simulation. There we go. It's going to go ahead and hit resync. It looks at like that, fix it. I think this one was taking priority. Let me try that one more time. No, I think it's fine. I think we just, we, we were, the this one was passing. So right now it's not passing because the minimum is, is 0.5. So, so that's why we don't show. This one right here is showing because it's on the floor. So we can fix that by just adding, 
the high above the floor condition. There we go. So we can see, so I think I can do ideal high. We can do something like that. And range from idea, idea high, we can just do a, a large number there. I think that's fine. If we don't add this, we're going to see, okay, so yeah, the one that I don't want to see is the one that is on the floor. So we can just enable that. And now we can see, you know, the one that is here, the one that is here, the one that is here. So I'm going to go back into my region occupy and we can, and you can change the material of this. If you want to change the material, you can. I'm also going to just make this a little bit bigger and maybe, you know, I like when things look nice. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. And I was going to override the component and what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene to show you the other physics components. So I think that works. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And, and just like I show you, make sure you hit play here so that you can see the physics working. Otherwise, we the physics weren't working. So let's just keep scanning here, scanning. And there we go. There we go. So now we're seeing, we're seeing some of the objects appear. We can go ahead and this one right here, I don't know if it's going to show because it's right on the top. I don't know that I can reach that area, but I think there's one sitting right here on the chair. So we can also, we can also show that one, a scan, there we go. So that one shows. So we have the three, the three robots that we, we set up. So let's go ahead and create a new scene and I'm going to show you a different component. I think the one that I'm going to show you, so if I go into up forces, some of these ones are just going to snap. I think I'm going to do, let's go ahead and do a line to camera because that one is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into scenes. We're going to be just cloning this scene. This one is going to be with force. We're going to just say with align to camera. Force. And then this one had the, I think, let me see which one this one was called. This one was called the Occupy region. So with Occupy region. The reason why I want to name this right is because I want you guys to, to test this out. So I'm going to be sharing this scene in Patreon and also in GitHub right after. Okay, so what I have right now is I'm going to just use the one that is aligned to Camera Force. And there we go. So in this one, I could use the robot and that's okay. But what I'm going to do just to change things up a little bit, I'm going to just go ahead and use the diamond that they have. And I think it's just a crystal. So we can go, we can go here and I'm going to show you how easy this is. So I'm going to delete this component and now you can't, you don't see anything on the scene, right? Because we just deleted it. But if I go into samples, we can go into the game template. Let's go into game. I'm going to go into prefab and I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop the crystals. I'm going to see the crystal showing, you know, multiple, in multiple places. And, and this will work, like if I go ahead and hit play, everything should work just like it did before. It's just going to have a different component. So I'm going to start scanning everything and we can just start looking at, there we go. You can see the crystals are showing. They have their own animation, but it's the same physics, right? So I don't want to use those physics. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into horizontal plane and I can use that condition is fine. And those conditions are fine. So what I'm going to do is let's go into forces. I'm going to remove this, remove this, which means that we don't need this region occupy anymore. And I'm going to add a new force. And this one is going to be aligned to camera. So if we go into the simulation view and you look at a couple options here. So on the forces, we can say, you know, move and rotate. We can just say move and rotate freely. This is another option that you can also set. The other one is constraining on the Y axis and the rotation. This one's gonna be on any of the axes and also it's gonna allow it to move. We're gonna do a continuous solve so we can keep solving the physics. We're going to be doing something different here. So the target relation, this is gonna be the movement relative to the camera. So you can do move, and move to and face. So there's just different options in here. So let's go ahead and, and, and test this one and see what this is gonna do. You can also change the movement scale, the rotation scale. So let's go ahead and what happens, see what happens when we do, when we do this one. I'm going to start just moving around and scanning. And scanning. And there we go. 
So I think one problem that we're going to have here is, let me just keep scanning and see what happens. Is there some conditions that I don't think are going to work for this scenario? So the one, there we go. Actually, it is working, but I was, I was afraid it wasn't going to be, so you can see how that one is moving in relation to the camera. So we're showing another one here. I think this one, if we do this one. So I think this one will work like if we were doing planets, right? Like if we're doing planets, then in that case, you know, some of those objects are going to be flying around. There we go. And so we can just uncheck, like in this case, you probably wouldn't want to do that. And you probably wouldn't want to do the is plane condition because this is not going to be sitting on a plane. But in this case, see how they're moving and moving around. I can also, I don't know if I can do this in real time, but let me try this. Let me do the movement scale to be faster. Maybe the rotation, it's going to be at a higher scale. Let's see how they're moving. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just increment this. Let me hit play. And I'm going to, let's go ahead and uncheck this plane size condition. We don't really need to do that. And I'm just going to start scanning. Just scanning. You can see how, so I think the movement is fast. Yeah, it is clearly faster because we changed this movement, movement scale to two. You can see how that's following. So this could be handy if you had UI, right? Like if you have UI component and you want to be interacting based on the position of the camera. Or if you had planets that you wanted to see that was were in front of the camera, you can do you know you can do that as well. So there's different options in here that you can try. So the other thing that I wanted to do as well is show you how you can do basically dependencies. So the way that you can handle dependencies if you go into conditions, and I think it's under it's actually under options and activate dependencies. So these are gonna be you know, dependencies that show, let's say that you want to set up an object and you want that object to appear after another object is set up. So the way that we can do this is we could have done, we can do another object and let's actually leave these as it is. And I'm going to create a new scene. So I'm going to do, so we can do a proxy, we can do a proxy with dependencies. And the game example shows how this works. But I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. So in this case, I'm going to show, I'm only going to show the robot. So what I'm going to do is let me, let me remove this component. And this component, it's going to just be, I'm going to do just a crystal. So I'm going to go into examples, Mars, Mars templates, templates, game, prefabs. So in this case, I'm just going to do what we did before, right? We have, we have the crystals. I don't need to see the mesh render. I think we I think this is fine if we do if we do that. And let me just look at the physics that we're using on this one. So we're using the region for occupancy, so that's fine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new game object here, but it's not gonna be a replicator. I only want one instance of this, and this is gonna be a robot. So in a robot, we're gonna have we're also gonna have a horizontal plane. We go ahead and go into that and I'm going to go into the perspective view so we can see that. And in this case, what I'm going to do is let me do the robot in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it inside. We have our proxy and there's really nothing, not much in here, but we can also grab the idle and I'm going to move it inside and I could actually just just put it in here. I don't know that I needed that object. There we go. So we have our robot right there. And it's just sitting. I think I can just move. Yeah, I think this is offset. So I'm just going to set it. So some of the things that we can do on this one, this one right now, it doesn't have any, any conditions. I guess these are some of the default conditions. It's plane condition, alignment condition, and set pose. I think this is fine. Horizontal up. We want the object to be pointing up. But I don't want to show the robot unless we have crystal. So that's when, that's where the dependency is coming handy. So if I were to go into a simulation view, you're going to see that this is showing right away. I don't want to show that right away. And also I don't want to show the robot right on, right above there. I want to just maybe put it on the table or something like that. So what I'm going to do is let me change the, add another condition here and I'm going to do, 
right above the floor. Maybe we can set it on the table. I think the size here it's matching because this one is within the threshold. So, so this one is passing. You can see the region on the top left. So I think we can put it right, right over there. Or we can put it right beneath here. It doesn't really matter. But anyways, I wanted to put it in, in some location. But I don't want to show the robot unless... So let's actually put him on the floor, right? So we can do... We can do something like that. So the robot is going to see... It's going to be sitting... Maybe we can just see, have it sitting right there. I think that's okay. So, but I don't want to show the crystals, the robot, unless we have crystals. So that's where the actions come in handy. So we're going to go ahead and add a new action. I'm going to go and select the activate dependency, which is going to add this. And the dependencies here, it's going to be one. So the dependency is going to be that I, I want to see at least one crystal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? As long as I can see one crystal, then we're okay. And I think as all we need to do is just add the crystal. All right, so what I'm going to do, I think, is look at the Mars example and see how they set up the dependencies. So I'm going to look at game, simple, and they have an example here that actually has dependencies. So if you look at this one, I see. So this object, it's the one, so the replicator is the one that you need to be associating that way. So if we look at the this object right here, which I, I believe is the actual robot. Yep, so in this case, it's the robot. If we look at the elevated surface, they have a proxy. They also have a dependency here, and the dependency is the actual object that has a replicator. So I think that's what we need to do. We need to go back into our demo and go into scenes, and I'm going to go into the proxy with dependency. So this one right here, it's going to be, let's go ahead and just name this one robot. And the replicator here is going to be, we can just say replicator crystals. I'm going to start naming these things better because otherwise we're, it's going to get confusing. And oh, we can just say crystals. I think it's fine. Crystals. So these are the crystals and this is the robot. So on uh, the robot side right now, we, we just basically have the horizontal plane. Well, in this case, the horizontal plane might already exist. What we need to do is we need to associate it with the replicator because that's the one that is going to kick in. And well, at least I know now because we look at that example. Okay, so let's go ahead and try. Let's go ahead and try this now. So I'm going to go into the game view. Let's change this to free aspect. And I'm going to go ahead and look in here. I want to make this bigger so we can see what's happening with the, with the actual robot. Okay, so we're going to be focusing in here. I'm going to be looking at the game view here. I'm going to go hit, hit play. And let's see what happens now. So here's our scene. There's really, there's nothing showing up yet. So we're going to start scanning. You can see the camera flying. And I should see the crystals showing up first. And we still see our robot first. I think, it, I think the crystals were showing up. Let me see. Let me try that one more time. It might be a matter of timing and, and that I'm not seeing... There we go, and let's keep doing it. Okay, so we're seeing the robot showing up first, but we're actually getting crystals, so let me try that again. Let's hit play, and there we go. So we don't have the crystals yet, so I just want to pay attention to this area, because I think what's happening, it's, it's, it's a timing thing, right? So we're going to keep scanning, keep scanning, And, and yeah, that's true. So there's actually a crystal that is showing up, and it's probably under the table. And the reason why it doesn't show, horizontal plane is kicking in, but the size, I think if I go here, and you can see that it, there's a timing here. It's trying to process it. And I think what's happening, let me see, is playing condition. I'm going to be, let's go ahead and explain condition and high above floor condition. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and look at the, let's go ahead and look at the crystals. Click on the inspector and actually the horizontal plane. And what I'm going to do here is I don't want the crystals to have, I actually don't want the crystals to have any of the rules that I'm going to be setting. So let's see, the pose action is fine. This is fine. We don't need to do that one. And show children on tracking action. I think that's fine. 
proxy forces, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I'm trying to minimize the amount of error that we're going to have, and I'm going to do that. So now if I go into my simulation view, I should be able to see the crystals. So let's go ahead and hit play one more time. I think some of the rules might be colliding. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. Go, go into a hierarchy and let's look at this object. This should be the first object that shows up before the robot shows up. And let's keep scanning, keep scanning. So we see, we see the robot, we don't see the crystals. It's actually kicking in the crystals. So let me try that one more time. And keep doing this and scanning. And keep scanning. So I think, yeah, I think this actually is kicking in before the robot is kicking in. So I think we're okay as far as timing. I don't want it to be perfect, but the, the way that it's working is the crystals are dependencies, so it's showing on the crystals and then the robot is showing after. I think what's happening is this is showing right away after the crystals show, so it's really hard to see that it's working or not, but that's how you use dependencies. If you guys have any other questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.